So I'm here at Draycott Water. Um, middle of November, near the end of November. The boats are just about ready to come off the water. It's a bit windy, a bit cloud cover, and it's cold, so I'm gonna have to get some clothes on today, I think. But we've got to be looking at some um, tactics for fry feeders. We'll try and look on surface tactics and just below the surface as well. So hopefully we can target some of the better resident fish, those ones with the long sharp plumes on the tail, the ones that look like proper rainbows, no these stockies. So hopefully, fingers crossed, um, we'll give it a bash. There's not that many boats out in the water, which is kind of typical come this time of year. When the better fish are here, or the better fish are on the go, all your competition boys seem to disappear. So hopefully we get some space to fish the way that we want to fish. Onto a shoal here, so I'm out in open water and I'm looking to drift onto a shoal. I'm going to bounce the boys. And I've got two rods here. I've got a, a softer action rod with two boobies. This is probably what I'm going to start with. And I've got a stiffer action rod. And this is like a, a hoverer line. And I can fish this a little bit higher in the water, but I just think these boobies, because it's quite windy, I'm looking for a commotion, so I'm probably going to start pulling. So, if I put this out of the way, and make sure my net's ready, we'll see how we get on. So this line is a high D, a really old fashioned line, but when it comes to this time of year, when the fish are quite high up, um, with the two boobies, the profile is just phenomenal. Um, the sinking profile. It can keep, I can keep my flies sort of short casting. I can keep them a foot below the surface. Deep casting, I can get my, my dropper fly right the way down. So just steady pulls is what I'm after. And what I do is after every pull, I lock my finger on the line just in case anything pulls back. So the majority of the fleet are down by the Farnborough Dam. So I've basically got all this water to myself. I'm always looking for signs of fry feeding. Usually gulls, fish swirling near the surface, that kind of thing. Now, usually with rainbows, they're like a white fly for fry feeders. Brownies, black. <laughs> Strange but true. And when I hit the water, I just want to give it two big pulls to rip the surface. So if there's anything there, they're obviously got to get enticed in to take the fly. So we'll fish this through first, and then I'll fish my other line just a little bit slower. But because this is clean water, I'll fish the fast method first, the more aggressive method. Nobody's fished it, so I can fish this way first. Again, I'm always scanning, um, looking for 
movement. Same as you would at any time of the year, really. Always hang your flies, especially that top dropper, and let your, your bigger fly come up behind. That's only fishing about six inches deep, six, seven inches deep, so you let that get down a little bit more. Again, you'll notice when I actually start pulling, locking that forefinger on the rod hand, just locking my line in place. This is crucial. If anything pulls back, you need immediate contact. Bear that in mind. That's better. That's fishing a bit deeper. So these are the flies I'm fishing. Um, that's in there, a little bit higher up in the water. So yeah, a little bit higher up in the water. You might see the top dropper. We all have snake in the point. And on the other rod, the sinking line. Well, that's a die five forty plus. I've got a white booby in the top dropper. And an olive snake, black eyes on the top dropper. So on that little drift there, I moved a couple of fish and had a, had a take, but that's it. So I've come in a, I've come in on a, another angle closer to the bank, so a little bit shallower water. We'll give that a try after I get this tangle out. Been a while since this old line's had an air in the old high D. And it's such a thin line, so it has got a tendency to tango, especially when you're fishing with boobies. But a little bit of work, it'll come out. I also seen, it's worth noticing, I seen um I seen a couple of fish move. But they were like dry fly rises, it was certainly one of the fly feeding rises. Two big rips make that make a noise. And then what I've been doing is down to 10, and then steady pulls. So this just got to take me a little bit closer into the sailing club, hopefully, um, and a little bit more shallow water. Be a good idea to to try the shallower water because it's surprising just how shallow the trout will go and they'll have it dry so take a different line each drift and try. So I actually had five takes and two drifts there on the uh, two boobies on the high D. And Rather than just keep battering the area, I'm going to move further over. And now I'm on the, I'm on much better shoal now. And my plan is to come up the edge of it, over the top, and down the other side. So I'm at end boy, um, right out in the open. But yeah, five takes there, and not one of them sort of buttoned properly, which suggests that they're not right on it, or I'm doing something wrong. So the reason for the rest is. I'll come and fish here, see if I can pull fish here as well. But then when I go do when I do go back to where I had those five takes, I'm gonna fish higher up in the water. I'm gonna take the boobies off, and I've got a little minky and a small steak, not a big one, a small olive one. Um, it looks apart, it's got eyes and everything on it. And we'll just see how we get on with that bit. We'll just give that, that bit of water a rest just now, and we'll fish the shore. If I get this bloody tangle out. The cursor are getting old. I can't see a bloody thing. It's just a tangle. That's it. But yeah, just give this just give that water a rest and come and have a wee shot here on the shoal. Shoals are always a good bit for fry feeders because they can herd the fry up against the side of the shoals. Um 
we use that as a kind of an ambush point. So I've been getting my takes, when I do that first two long pulls, you can see the water bulging when a fish comes in and I've just been slowing it down and letting the fish lock onto the fly. Rather than pulling away from the fish, I've just been figure eight and a couple of little tweaks here and there and there. that's how they're taking it. Now I don't know if it's because I'm not aggressive enough with my retrieve. I don't think so, I think they want it slow. I think the noise initially brings them in but then they want it slow. That's why I'm thinking the minke and the snake just a little bit higher up. But we'll go over the shoal, see what it's like there, sun's out. Tip we're in any second, so we might have to put the camera away. Certainly get a cover over it. But the good thing with these bits, I'm away from everybody else. And I just think when you're fishing for resident fish, being away from everybody else makes such a big difference. Everybody's down at the Farber Dam or up in Rainbow Corner. I'm in the middle here working the shoals, looking for the better fish. Um, not a big fish. It's stray caught. They really get very big nowadays. However, they do get very well mended. Plenty feeding. So they get those beautiful slim line bodies, sharp tails, fins. Picture perfect rainbows, if that makes sense. That's what we're looking for. What I tend to do when I'm fishing the boys is I'll take a, an outside line to the left, then directly on top of the... Oh, you bugger! That's a fish up behind the humongous booby. That's the first one I've pulled up, actually. The other fish have been on the first couple of strips, and then just slowly, that's the first one I've actually pulled up, which suggests that fish was a little bit deeper. Whereas the others have been up near the surface, maybe a couple of feet below it. Now, the wind's blowing onto the shoal, so imagine it's coming over the top dam at Draycott. So as it hits the shoal, there'll be an undertow. And I'm just trying to find where the fish are on that undertow, and then we can capitalise on it. Wind's getting up. I might need to get the drogue out. Oh, this line. <coughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. So they typically the day that you want to go and make a video, they've got a, a sailing regatta on, hence the bigger noise and the horns, etc. I also kind of get to fish the areas that I want to fish, which is a bit rubbish. It's all water users at the end of the day. Everybody needs to get along. That's me right on the shoal now. Just on there, and there's a fish, there's a fish just coming up here. There's a fish in front of me. Cast right over the top of him. Absolutely no interest in my flies, sadly. I think probably my line hitting the water is what spooked them. You've seen the big bulge. 
So, I'm sacking off the old high D because I keep getting massive tangles and that one's a beauty. So, we gotta change lines. We'll sort that out another time. But I'm pulling fish, but not as good as I think. I, I, I think the white fly, for some reason, they're just not coming onto it properly. So, we'll change that. I'm gonna change my leader setup as well a little bit. <coughs> I've got a little fly in the dropper. I've got to suck him off. They do a lot of little fly. Fish that I'll find I've come for the big one. I've got so, two bigger flies on now. And I've got a die 540 plus. I don't know why, but I was pulling a lot of fish. I've had fish up at Envoy, but I pulled a lot more fish here in the shallower water. So I've got a line with a straighter sinking profile. And I've moved that white booby to the top dropper. And I've got an olive snake on the point. I'm hoping, given the fact that this line's a lot thicker, I didn't get as many tangles with the wind. But just the same, cast it, two big pools. As you can see why the boat's coming in behind me. I was right in the middle of it. Uh, soon had to move sadly. Where the fish was now. See if this results in a hookup rather than follows and pulls. As you can see it's just absolute sailing fest. Sadly, I ended up having a swearing competition with some of the sailors. It wasn't very good. <coughs> Typical because I was right in the middle of the fish as well. However, moved a little bit inshore and managed to find some action with decent fish. No massive, but decent. Which is really nice because it's been a struggle up until then. So, this rainbow. Although it was the massive, with what I describe as a clean fish, well mended, if that makes sense. Long and thin, nice tail on them. I was hoping for something about three or four pounds, maybe, but sadly, no. That was on a booby snake, that one. And it had actually, um, something had grabbed it, probably a cormorant, maybe a pike, there's pike in here, but I think a cormorant. Um, it was pretty cut up on one side, so I'll show you the best side first. See if I can zoom in a little bit and show you this mark. You can properly grab that one. I can move. Unfortunately, due to the sailors, I had to move. Uh, when I moved, I went a little bit higher than the water. I've changed my line. I've changed my line. Oh, shit. There's loads. I found a pot of fish here, but I don't think they're big fish. I think they're just small. I'm right on the Farnborough Dam. So I've come up, I'm on a fast class, fast intermediate, sorry, on the vision fast intermediates. And I've swapped over just a little bit higher in the water, really. Um, a white humi and a little snake, olive. And I'm just, I'm in very shallow water here. But it's amazing where the fish will hold. Again, I was hung on that fly. I didn't take my line of catch, but sadly the stamp the fish stuck his. I was right up against the damn wall, so I couldn't film much. The thing is, Find the snockies, making the fun in games. I'm hoping through these, I might come up with a better fish.
Despite my best efforts, just stockies. Jeez. However, um, the methods that I did employ are the methods for rainbows at this time of year. Um, it's just a shame that the resident fish weren't playing on the day for me. But the methods and techniques are definitely ones that work. Um, so if you give them a try, hopefully it will work for you and you're getting amongst those resident fish, the proper fish, the ones that we we all want to catch. I thought I'd add this bit. Um, kind of ruined my filming. I've got a fish in the net here. Watch what happens to the net. Ruined my filming for the day. Net's gone. No more net. Oh dear. 